Our story begins in Tahlequah, where the Cherokee Nation has a new story to tell. It is a story of taking historically significant property and redeveloping that property to ensure it's environmentally safe and meets the current needs of the community. After the removal, the Cherokee Nation knew it had to establish an educational system. They did that by establishing the male and female seminary. The male seminary is located here on this spot in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, the heart of the Cherokee Nation. In 1910, the male seminary was destroyed by fire. We have this great legacy. We face adversity, survive, adapt, prosper, and excel. And the Trail of Tears was a phenomenal, overwhelming adversity. So after we faced that, we knew we uh, survived. And then we had to learn how to adapt uh, to a plan of excelling and prospering after that. So the, several of the first acts that the Cherokee Nation uh, committed to after that Trail of Tears was to reunify ourselves in an active union, followed by our Constitution. So we looked at the, the uh, scope of government, we looked at our new circumstances in Indian Territory, and we set out to create a constitutional and governmental plan to rebuild ourselves. Cherokees have always had two great passions, and those are actually memorialized in the Treaty of New Echota, and that's self-governance and education. And those were evidenced very clearly after the Trail of Tears. Our first building we built was our Supreme Court building in 1844, which was the, uh, our commitment to and our memorial to self-governance. The second buildings we built were our male and female seminaries, institutions of higher education, we understood that we could not survive and go on to prosper and excel without knowing the world about us and all the skills and tools and trades that those around us had. After the collapse of the seminaries, the property was used as farmland until 1961. In 1961, this property was developed into Marcoma Bible Academy, a Christian high school. In 2005, the academy closed and the property was for sale. This gave the Cherokee Nation an opportunity to reclaim and redevelop this historical property. Well, when Marcoma closed, uh, it was a private Christian school uh, that was established on the uh, male seminary site where the Cherokees built the first higher learning institution west of the Mississippi. Uh, so when Marcoma campus closed, uh, the property was unused uh, for several years and the Cherokee Nation was approached to acquire that piece of property. Well, when Cherokee Nation purpose, uh, purchased the property, uh, there was about 119 acres um, and on that property there were eight structures uh, which included uh, two dormitory facilities, uh, a library, a gymnasium, uh, and two houses um, and uh, the chapel uh, as was part of the campus as well. Um, the property was considered as a Brownsville project because uh, once we got in there and we evaluated the historic usage of the campus, um, it was built in the 60s. Uh, most of the facilities that were there on the campus were built in the 60s. Uh, and so uh, we went in as, uh, with the help of our environmental uh, services group, went in and evaluated um, things that were inside uh, each of the facilities and we had everything from mold to asbestos um, and so uh, we realized that we were going to have to remediate and uh, rehab rehabilitate the structures. Through the EPA's Brownfields 128A Tribal Response Grant Program, the Intertribal Environmental Council and the Cherokee Nation completed an environmental site assessment of the property. In the Brownfields program, it's dealing with properties that uh, are hampered by contaminations, uh, different types of contamination that uh, hinder the redevelopment process. So this program played really well into what the tribe was wanting to do out at the Marcoma Bible Academy, which was name, that was the name at the time. So uh, we 
deployed our people, which we have about 44 people working in an environmental group right now. And I borrowed people from other uh, uh, programs within the environmental group and we did uh, lead-based paint, asbestos assessments, and any other thing that, that we felt like we needed to, to look at out there we determined that there wasn't anything other than lead-based paint and asbestos that we were going to run into. What we did run into was some chemicals that were used at, in the high school. Uh, I, I guess since they, they closed down, they just stored those chemicals and a lot of them started to crystallize and when, when it, those chemicals do get to that stage, then they may may be a problem, so the Brownfields program came in and helped with the uh, uh, disposal of those those uh, hazardous chemicals. The Cherokee Nation took this property and made the focus on health, using the old dorms as offices, building a 25,000 square foot recreation center and an elder care facility. Well, the successes are just beginning. One of the first things we did was renovate the gym into a uh, uh, fitness center. There's probably been nothing like it in the Tahlequah area. I'm in Walmart and at the Reesers and the gas stations and folks come up and say, you don't realize how much we appreciate uh, the Marcoma gym. And we, of course, call it the Mail Seminary Recreational Center. Uh, but it gives a chance to people to uh, not only make the effort to exercise, but to join a community of people who think healthy. And that's the seed, and it's going to grow. The rest of the property will grow into uh, uh, programs and facilities that are focused on uh, youth and elderly, uh, driving us to happy and healthy people. Well, the Marcoma property was an opportunity to recover a phenomenally significant historic site, the Mail Seminary. Uh, and so when we reacquired it, we zoned it. And we believed after lots of study that it should be zoned for youth and elderly. And so the Marcoma property developed into a fitness center for the young and old. Uh, and in the future, uh, it'll be dedicated to that. So on one end of the property, we have the young folks or younger folks that are or a fitness center. And actually, on the other end of the property, we have our PACE program, the program for all-inclusive care for elderly, so those in their last days can enjoy a rich and full life. Our fitness center is open seven days a week, and we offer a variety of programs. Um, of course, we have uh, a lot of cardio equipment. We offer uh, weight training. We have two different uh, weight training uh, facilities. One is free weights and one is machines. We also offer a number of um, recreational league activities such as soccer, basketball, volleyball, and they even offer stickball, cardiac dance, and actually this program has grown a lot faster uh, than we anticipated. We have 7,600 members now and uh, in fact in March there were thir over 13,000 visits to the health center. The PACE program uh, opened in December of 2007 and it was uh, designed to, to uh, provide a service to uh, keep people from long-term care situations or nursing homes. So they provide adult daycare services. Uh, they have around 50, 52 clients that they're, they're open Monday through Friday um, to provide um, services that they need. They have a full-time physician providing medical care and services, physician services. They also uh, offer occupational and physical therapy. Then they have uh, activities uh, for them. Their facility is around 13,000 square feet and they have around 27 staff. Uh, yet undeveloped, but early in the planning stages, we'd love to rebuild our male seminary because it was such a great symbol and memorial to our passion to education. And we've recovered the uh, original plans and hopefully someday in the future we can rebuild that building to use it again for developing our people toward that happy and healthy 
class and become a historic monument that will inspire us every time we drive or walk by it. That it's not once there was a great Cherokee Nation, but there still is. And we're still striving to achieve that ultimate greatness, being a people that are happy and healthy. The Cherokee Nation has taken this historic piece of property, eliminated contamination, and redeveloped it into a beautiful, health-focused property. This project is an example of how working with the United States Environmental Protection Agency and utilizing the Brownfield 128A Tribal Response Grant Program builds an environment that is safe, friendly, and beneficial to the community.